Hi there, Sandra here from Create in Spain and from Cesar Juliet Beginners to Pro. Now normally when I do any cutting on my cutting machine, I have my blade wound in so that you can barely see it. However, if you can see my blade at the moment, if I make it glint like that, you can see there's a lot of blades stuck out, probably about two millimeters sticking out of there. There is a very good reason why I've done that because I'm cutting something that I'm generally not cutting with my cutting machine, but which you can use your cutting machine for if you so wish. Now, I've got some air dry clay. Now, what I did with my air dry clay is I put it between a couple of pieces of silicone, put it between the plates of my Gemini, and I got it to roll it out. So the reason why this is stuck out the amount it is, is because this is relatively thick, probably a millimeter or so there. This is stuck out more than a millimeter and I use a very low force. I used a force of about eight. It will go through that without putting too much gunk up into my holder. Now I can take my holder apart and clean it out so that's really not a problem. This stuff will dry and brush out or you can brush it out before it's dry. It's not sticky, this. It's kind of dry and flaky rather than anything else. It's no worse than having bits of paper stuck in there. But it means, because I have a lot of blades stuck out, that I can get to the bottom of this without putting virtually any pressure on it. I do not want to have the indent of the holder in my clay, obviously. I only want the tip of the blade to go through it. So that is why I put so much of the blade out. Now I did some cuts here with a force of eight. I just set a random low number and a speed of two. And then I did some with a force of eight and a speed of 10. And it made no difference as far as I can see to the quality of cut. If you happen to want to cut some air dry clay for things like earrings, pendants, that sort of stuff, you should be able to do that quite easily. This is just a piece of plastic. I put it there because the last thing I want is to have to try and peel clay off of my mat and clean my mat. And, uh, too much aggravation, too much hassle, why would I want to do that? The clay itself won't move on a piece of plastic, it will stay there quite happily. This particular one, you'll notice, hopefully, that there is a texture to. And all I did for that was I used a stencil, which again, I've cut out with my Caesar Juliet, put the stencil over the top. And in this particular case, I just used a small rolling pin to put the texture onto it. And I did that before I cut it. I wanted to see whether having the texture on there made a great difference to the cuts. I don't think it has. I guess it's up to you whether you put a pattern on, texture pattern on before or after you cut these things, if indeed you want to try it at all. Um, yeah, I just thought I would try it just to see how well it did it. Why would you want to do it? Because you can just, you know, have metal cutters or whatever. Well, perhaps you want to do something and you've got a cutter, but it's not quite the size that you wanted it to be. Or maybe you want to do a shape that you haven't got a cutter for. So if you do happen to be into making this kind of thing, and it could be anything with air dry clay, it could be bits and pieces for pottery type things, it could be jewellery, it could be, I don't know, whatever you want to use it for. But just to let you know that you can. And there is no reason why you shouldn't. Now, I know that the edges of this are a little bit rough. That's because you have a blade dragging through rather than something pressing down. But once this is dry, you could just go around the edge with a nail file and smooth it off. That's not going to be a problem. I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to sand them down and I'm going to paint them. I'm going to put some holes in them so they can be used as pendants or whatever 